founder of Luxury Groomer. This is Rosie, our adorable doggy of the day. This is Dr. <laughs> Lisa Littman. Hi guys. This is Rosie. She's actually a 12 year old rescue. We think about 12 year old rescue. So just, this is what a rescue dog looks like. And Rosie actually has an issue with her anal glands. So I'm asked by the owner during grooming to check her anal glands. So we'll talk about what that means. What are anal glands? Where are they? And what involvement should your groomer have, if any, with your dog's anal gland? So Dr. Lisa, can you kind of tell us what's up with anal glands? Yes, yeah, so it's a really good question. It's a really common question that I get. They're actually technically sacs that sit inside the rectum at about 10 and 2. Some people also say 4 and 8, but they're really more like 10 and 2. They're almost on the top. So when I do a rectal exam and I do a digital palpation, um, you can feel them on either side of the wall. And they feel like actual sacs or what most people call glands and they're filled with scented material. So we know that when dogs uh, urinate on things, they mark their scent everywhere. They also do that when they defecate. So they defecate and it's really stinky and they express this material. And uh, if they, they can get infected, so if those glands or sacs become impacted, then they, you can get what's called an anal sac abscess, uh, and that can be infected, and there's certain things we can do about that, such as antibiotics, uh, manually expressing them, and also in extreme cases, surgery. So, Annie, I know when a lot of my patients go to the groomer, they do have their anal sacs or their anal glands expressed or checked, we tend to do this in different ways. So usually groomers are doing it from the outside of the body where you can actually feel them. I typically tend to go in and do a whole uh, rectal examination and also express through that route. Yeah, so groomers, and, and things have changed over the years with this too, so now there's different schools of thought. So yeah, back in the day, way, way back in the day, um, if you went to the groom shop, they tried to express the glands on every dog and they thought that that was what you should do and it should be healthy, but we sort of have noticed now that, like you say, don't fix what's not broken yeah. and you can cause more problems than good. So there are dogs that have issues with their anal glands that could use a regular check and if they are full, could use a regular expression. But we kind of take the advice from the vet and just if they feel full, then we'll gently try to express them. We don't force anything, but most dogs don't actually need it done. Yeah, so for example, I have never expressed my own dog's anal sacs in her entire life. Um, she just doesn't have a problem. We tend to see these problems when dogs have allergies. That's a big cause of anal sac issues. And so if they are recurring, if they're bothering them, people ask me a lot, how do we know that they're bothering them? Typically, dogs will be scooting, they'll be worrying back there, like licking themselves. Uh, so those are two really big signs that your dog may need a little bit more help uh, if they're uncomfortable. Yeah, and it's interesting because some dogs will just have a problem maybe once in their whole life, and that's what happened right. with Rosie. She's yeah. oh, okay. undetermined rescue age, but she's got to be at least 10 or 12, and I've been grooming her for probably six years, and just one time out of the blue, yeah. she had an issue, so now we check them and just feel, do they feel got full, it. is there anything going on, and then that's it. Yes, yeah, so it's a really great part of a physical exam for sure. I mean, when Annie is doing her uh, grooming, it's, I mean, she's looking at the dog from head to toe, so it's always great. Sometimes people don't know that there's an issue back there until the anal gland abscess is actually ruptured or cause an even bigger issue, and then they can really get infected and cause a problem for the dogs, and sometimes they see a little bit of blood back there or pus. Um, and their dogs again will be dragging their butt, they'll be licking a lot, things like that. So and you'll notice that, the smell. There's a very yes. potent smell. Yes, there is a very <laughs> potent smell. And some dogs will just release their anal glands just when they're relaxed or kind of for no reason, or if they're scared, that happens a lot. Uh, so if you notice a very pungent smell, then that is what it is, and it's probably most likely normal for them. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. and listening to this very awkward subject, but glad everyone's <laughs> well-informed. But very important subject. Very important subject. Say bye, Rosie. All right, bye, guys. <laughs>